morning. Welcome to Lockdown Pilates version two. We're going to um, work through a posterior sling class today. So we're going to give you a few classes to work through over the next few weeks so that you don't miss out and you don't um, get too stiff or um, miss your Pilates too much anyway. So we'll get started. We're going to do a little warm up and then work through the class probably about 45 minutes all focusing on your posterior sling today. So that's back of your body bottom, backs of your legs, calves, lower back, into the upper back, back of the arms. Okay, so that's our focus for today. Um, benefit, I've got a little cup of coffee to join me today. Um, so that's quite nice, being at home doing our Pilates. So I've got no mat, I have got my ball. So if you've got your ball, maybe um, just make sure you've got it to hand because we will use it for some of the exercises in the class today. So like I said, we're gonna do a little warm up. So starting with your feet together, take your toes apart, heels apart, so that your hip distance apart with your um, foot position and your leg position. And then we're just gonna focus on that roll out and in of our feet. So just rolling onto the outer border of your foot, onto the inner border of your foot, and just focusing on trying to relax the bones of your foot so that they move and they adapt to the base of support that you've got. So just rolling from one side to the other, then take yourself onto the outer border of your foot and just gently roll back down until your big toe is resting on the floor. You've still got that little bit of an arch in your foot. And then from there, maintaining that position, take yourself into a little squat, down and up. So you can hopefully feel that by keeping that little gentle arch underneath the inner border of your foot, you help the alignment of your limb so that your hips, your knees, your toes are in line. You're squeezing your bottom as you come up and the weight goes into the heels a little bit as you go down into your squat. Okay, staying up here, still keeping that same foot position with your big toe pushing into the floor. Let's just go up onto the toes and down. So lift and lower, trying to focus on pushing through your big toes so that helps to stabilize the outside of your ankle. Those heels should be coming up and down in a nice straight line. Good. Keep going. Two more. If you can hear my toes clicking. <laughs> Last time. Okay, and relax. Right, let's just bring it up to our pelvis. So pop your hands on the top of your pelvis. Just take your hips forward, take them back. So we're doing that sort of arching and flattening of our lower back tipping the pelvis forwards and back, tailbone coming down and under, and back and out. So you feel how much movement you've got in your lumbar spine, how much movement you've got at the pelvis. And you're wanting to feel where that halfway point would be between those two extremes. So feel for you that halfway point, get yourself steady in that position. So you're not, you've got a huge arch in your lower back in this position, but you're not flat either. So you've got a little bit of an arch in your lower back. Maintaining that position, pop a little diamond shape on the tummy, on the lower tummy. Let the tummy relax. And then just draw up and in, thinking about your pelvic floor and release. So really think pelvic floor first, drawing up and in that sling of muscle from your pubic bone to your coccyx that you're lifting up and in from there first. Not squeezing your bottom, so you shouldn't be squeezing your glutes and releasing, you're lifting up down below. Same muscles that you would use if you were stopping yourself having a wee or anything else. Okay, so just draw up and in, hold it there, just draw the tummy in towards you, so the tummy's coming in towards the spine in the lower part. Not too much effort, it's just that sensation of some tone, tone in that position, in that small arch in your lower back. Okay, just roll the shoulders back and round, just nice relaxed movements of the shoulders. Open up through the collarbones, just get some movement of those shoulder blades. Good. And then hold it down and back and open at the collarbones and just let yourself release. So you feel nice and open through the chest here. Okay, let's take a breath in. And out. As you breathe in, Take that air down into the bottom of your lungs. Feel your chest wall open so you get a nice bit of width through the bottom of your chest, nice lateral breath. And down into your tummy as well. 
So we're not thinking about breathing up into the top of your shoulders. You're taking the air down into the bases of your lungs. Last time. And take it down. Okay, let's just do a couple of shoulder rolls back. Take the arms up and forwards and open the chest and centre. And again, open and centre. Bring the arms down, roll the shoulders back for two. Up, open for two. So just a little sequence, opening up our chest. Roll it back for two. Arms in front and open the chest. And again. Last time, roll the shoulders back for two, and then forwards and open the chest. Lovely, good, last one. And relax down, okay, a little bit of arm openings now, so up and round, and back, and the other side, round, and back. So we're just thinking about those hips facing forwards, as you rotate the arm and you look at the hand as you go. So you rotate through the head, neck, upper trunk, just to get a little bit of mobility starting in the upper body. One more each side, breathing out as you rotate round, in as you come back, and relax the arms. Okay, so let's take it into our foot series, let's come onto our toes, down into a little squat. Stretch up tall, come down, and again onto your toes, down into a low squat, Stretch up tall and down. Um, think about drawing the tummy in to help you maintain that balance as you go into your squat. And down two more. Down into your squat. Stretch up tall and down and again. Up and down. Well done. Just walk the feet out. A little bit of movement through the foot and ankles, elbows into your side, just open and centre, open and centre. So again, you're just kind of waking up the back of your rotator cuff here. So the back of the body is starting to wake up and warm up. Good. And then just take the arms out and down, bring them back and centre, out and down, back and centre. So getting a little bit of rotation the shoulders and the forearms. Last couple. And relax, good. Okay, let's just do a little series of movements with our legs. So I just want you to come into a left leg lift with a right arm lift, bring it down, take the arm and the leg out to the side and take it back and up, other side. So we're going Opposite leg and arm, out to the side, and back. And again, lift, out, behind you. Lift, out, behind you. Keep it going. Opposite hand to the leg. Good, and again, keep the tummy drawn in. Starting to wake up the rest of your body. Get those hips moving a little bit. And out, last time, and behind you. And relax, well done, okay. So we're gonna do a little bit of work for the posterior chain just to start kind of activating it a little bit. So we're gonna get hold of the ball now. Take hold of your ball. And then we're just gonna stand mainly on your right leg. Tap your left foot just so it's behind you. Ball is just in front. And you're gonna bend at the hips and squeeze your bottom to come up. So it's kind of like a deadlift movement. And that ball is just encouraging that sort of drop down of your arms. But I want you to keep your chest lifted, your head lifted. And like I say, the other foot is there just for a little bit of balance. It's not really there to put your weight through. Bottom out and come back up. One more. Bottom out, come back up. Good, switch sides. Okay, I'll do it side on so you can sort of see what action we're wanting. So like I say, not much weight through that behind leg. Tummy drawn in. 
chest lifted, head lifted, and just drop forwards and squeeze as you come up. You'll feel the hamstring stretching the back of your thigh. Mine are very tight. <laughs> tight today because I did some exercise a couple of days ago that has made my hamstring sore. So anyway, I'm sure I would be much better than this normally. Good, squeeze as you come back up, chest lifted, bottom out. You are just hinging from your hips. And up, one more. Down and up, good, okay. So we're gonna take that same action into a movement that's just gonna encourage a little bit more balance. So we're back onto your right leg. Tummy drawn in, this time I want you to reach out with the ball Leg goes behind you, tummy drawn in, and then come into a knee lift. Reach out with your ball. Bring it into a knee lift. Tummy drawn in. Think about the bones of the foot adapting to their base of support. Get your focus out into the knee lift. One more, lengthen and pull it into the knee lift and relax, well done. Okay, switch sides on your other leg, tummy drawn in, reach it away from you, leg behind you, bring it into a knee lift, good, and again. One more. Knee lift and relax. Well done. Okay. Put your ball down for a second. Come and have a little drink. Okay. So we're going to go into a roll down, take ourselves down onto the floor. Mat or no mat, doesn't matter really, because you've got your. Nice comfy carpet, hopefully. Okay, so we're here, side on, tummy drawn in, feet hip distance apart, shoulders down and back. We're going into a roll down. So a breath in, arms up, onto your toes, down, bring your chin to your chest, roll through your upper back, take it into your lower back. Then you move from your hips and you just keep yourself rolling down until you feel a bit of stretch build up in the backs of your thighs. Breath in and breathe out as you uncurl. Tailbone coming down first and restack the spine until your shoulders lift and your head lifts last. And again, breath in, arms up. And down. Chin to your chest. Full roll down. Curl through the whole of your spine. Wait until you feel that tension build up in the backs of your thighs and your calves. Breathe in and hold it. And then uncurl, tailbone down to the floor. Roll yourself up. Restack the spine, shoulders and head lift last. Last time, breath in, arms up. And down, chin to your chest, rolling forwards. Let the arms hang. Curve through the whole spine. Wait to feel that stretch build up in the backs of your thighs. Breath in. And then let's breathe out. Bring your hands to the floor. Walk yourself out to a downward dog. Okay, so it's bottom up in the air. Head is dropped in between your arms. Walk out the heels just to get some lengthening through the backs of your thighs and your calves. Then just try and hold both heels down for a moment, bottom right up. And then release the right leg out behind you just to activate the back of the leg, lift and lower. One more. Bring your feet either side again, walking out the heels. And release the left leg out behind you. Lift and lower. Hips stay square to the floor. One 
more. And then just one more walk out of those heels. And walk the hands back to your feet. Okay, so here, you're just gonna hold on to the ankles and try and extend through the knees and bend. Extend through the knees and bend so that we're just, again, lengthening out that posterior chain, lengthen and release. One more. And relax. Okay, walk those hands out again, this time coming out to a high plank, tummy drawn in, just activate that core, holding it there, breathing in and out. Five, four, three, two, one. Bring the knees to the floor. Sit yourself back, have a little stretch. Good. Just release off. Okay, so now before we carry on with any more, because we're gonna do a little bit of a section of the class on your hands and knees, we're gonna loosen off those wrists, okay? Because I know some of us struggle pushing through the hands and the wrists. Good to get that mobility though. Okay, so arms are out in front of you. I want you to pull the wrist back and down. Pull them back and down. Keep going. Okay, this time, right palm facing down to the floor, left palm turned up to the ceiling. Extend at the left wrist and take hold of the fingers, pull them back. So you're stretching out through those forearm flexors lengthening out through the wrist and take it right to the end of the fingers. Those tendons come right to the end of the fingers. Stretch it out and relax. On the other side, take your right palm up to the ceiling, extend at the wrist, take hold of the fingers, bring them back, lengthen through the forearm. Good. And relax, palms facing down again, just side to side with the wrists. Not the arms, just, just moving at the wrist. And then circles. And the other way. And then bring your hands onto the floor. Turn your palms outwards so that the fingers face towards your knees as much as you can. Just make sure that you have turned outwards. If you try and turn in, it's all going to get very awkward. Okay, so. Fingers are facing as close towards your knees as they can. Ease back there if you can. Really stretch out through the wrist, through the forearms. And relax, good. Okay, so hopefully they feel like they've warmed up a little bit. They're a bit more mobile. We're gonna come into four point kneeling. Okay, so your hands are directly under your shoulders. The knees are directly under your hips. We're gonna do a few press ups to start with, okay. So we're going to start with our close grip press ups because they are the ones that are going to work the triceps a little bit more, which is obviously part of our posterior chain. It's part of the back of the body, our extension kind of movements. So in that position, stay in close grip. If you want to, you can keep the knees in that boxy position and just come straight down. If you're able to, take the legs a little bit further back, bring the feet off the floor, load up the arms a bit more. Tummy drawn in, here we go. Down and push up. Breathe out to push up. Pushing the floor away, tummy drawn in. Two more. Last one. Well done, okay. This time, just to add to that a little bit, when you're extending your right leg, so right leg goes out behind you, tummy drawn in, try and even the weight through both hands and take it down again and up. Breathe out to push up. Two more. Okay, this time come halfway down and hold it. 
and tap down and up with the leg. Tummy drawn in. Two more. Well done, good. Have a little stretch back. That's good for the triceps, good for the back of the arms. Well done. Okay, back up we go. This time we're going to start again with the left leg out behind you. Try and get the weight as even as you can through both hands. Tummy drawn in, here we go. And push. Two more. Halfway down for me now. Hover, tap down and up with the leg. Two, three, four, five. Bring the leg back in, stretch back into child's pose. Well done. Ah, good. Waking up now. Okay, so we're going to get the ball. We use the ball for the next section of the class. It's still working on the upper body, really. It's going to take it a little bit more into your shoulder. Good, okay. So, down on your tummy. This time, I just want you to have the ball behind you, resting on your bottom. Forehead down into the floor. Before we start, just think about drawing in from your tummy. So you draw that tummy in towards you and by doing that, kind of activates the lower tummy and it kind of brings you into a bit more of a neutral spine position. Shoulders are down and back, lift and lower. So we're still using the back of the arms, opening the front of the chest. You can have a head block or a little cushion or towel under your forehead if it makes it a bit more comfortable. Probably would keep you in a better alignment. Okay, one more, hover and hold. 10 little pulses, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax, well done. Okay, pop that ball in between your lower ankles, your lower legs, straighten the legs out. So we're just gonna do a one leg kick, but as a double leg kick, so both legs are gonna come up you're going to bend and bounce for three little pulses and then extend back down. So let your upper body relax. Draw your tummy in. I'll just show you one. So we're one, two, three, and extend. So as you extend, you really bring everything into it. You use your glutes. So you just lift away from the floor very slightly. So not overextending at the lower back, just activate it through the glutes a little bit more. Okay. Here we go, breath in to prepare, and then pulse for three, two, one, extend. Good. Three, two, one, extend. Good. Two more. Extend. Last one. Good. Okay, take hold of your ball. This time it's going above your head. So you're nice and long through the arms. Again, forehead is down towards the floor. We are going to lift the head away from the floor, but I want you to keep your nose pointing down at it so you're not overextending through the neck. Draw your tummy in, tailbone under slightly. Lift the forehead, lift the breastbone, chin tucked in, and then we're going to bring the arms up and take that ball round in a circle. One more. And relax down, good, okay. So we're gonna run through that whole little section again and repeat and change the direction with the ball the next time. Okay, so we're starting with the triceps. So it's forehead down into the, into the floor. 
ball is behind you, nice and long with the shoulders pulling down away from your ears, tummy drawn in, and we lift and lower. Breathe out to lift, in to lower. Shoulders pulled down away from your ears the whole time. Open at the chest. Doesn't matter how high those arms go. Keep the tummy drawn in. You're gonna hold up on this one. Keep it there, 10 little pulses. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Well done. Ball in between your ankles. Back to our one leg kick. That's a double leg kick. Okay, so the ball between the ankles just activates your adductors a little bit as well. Draw the tummy in towards you. Flatten out slightly through the lower back. Here we go. Breath in to prepare and breathe out. And extend. So it's a bend to three, extend, good, and again. So activate those glutes as you extend through the legs. Keep it going. Two more. Last one. And relax, good, okay, take hold of the ball. It's coming out above your head again this time. Chin tucked in, tailbone under. Lift the forehead, lift the breastbone, lift the arms, really draw that tummy in, engage your glutes and extend round and up. One more. And relax down, well done. Okay, push yourself back into child's pose. Stretch out through the lower back, release your lower back. Okay, so while we're here, we're just going to do a little bit more in four-point kneeling, activating the lower half of the body a little bit more this time. So we're going to stay four-point kneeling. I want you to put the ball behind your left knee. Okay, shoulders and hands are in line. Tummy's drawn in, spine in neutral. Chin tucked in so we're not extending through that neck. Okay, we're just going to lift and lower with that left leg. Tummy drawn in. Here we go. Breathe out to lift, in to lower. Really squeeze the glutes to lift and having the ball in behind the back of the knee just activates the hamstring a little bit more as well. You could use a cushion or a rolled up towel if you don't have a ball. One more like this. Bring it down, a little rest. This time, still keeping the ball at the same, on the same leg, I want you to push down hard into the floor with your left hand and your right knee. Release your right hand and we're gonna extend with the arm, bring the knee to the elbow. Breathe out and in. So a little bit more of a challenge keeping the Knee bent and lengthening through the arm. Still try and keep that spine neutral. Couple more. Just one more. Extend, relax, well done. Switch sides, pop the ball in behind the other knee. Okay, we're back to hands directly under the shoulders, tummy drawn in. Just working through the leg first of all. Here we go, breathe out to lift, in to lower. Keep that neutral spine, keep your hips square to the floor. Don't overextend through the lower back, so it doesn't matter how high that leg lifts, it's about keeping your neutral spine. And relax. Okay, now let's just get your focus. So it's right hand pushing firmly into the floor and left knee. Release the left hand. Extend elbow to knee. Well 
So a couple more. Last one. Release your ball. Have a little stretch back. Well done. Good. Okie dokie. We're going to go on to your side for the next set of exercises. Doesn't matter which side as long as you remember to do both. Okay. So we're going to use the ball for the first one because we're going to do clam. And we're going to make use of the ball again behind the back of the knee so that we're activating that posterior chain a little bit more. The knees are in front of you, the feet are in line with your bottom. Rest yourself comfortably down, tummy drawn in, feet staying relatively together. You lengthen through the top hips so your hips are square, tummy drawn in, little gap under your waist. Lift the knee and down. Breathing out and in. So just get that rotation at the hip, foot stays close to the other foot, you're keeping hold of the ball, we're just activating the outside of the hip. Couple more. Okay, this time bring both feet up off the floor, still try and keep the length in the top hip, lift and lower. So this time just makes the balance a little bit more challenging. You probably feel like you've got more movement at the hip, so it's going through a larger range of movement. And it probably helps you keep that hip forward slightly, keep hold of the ball, so that little bit of tension in the back of the leg to hold on to the ball. We're gonna stay up on this next one, so keep the knee lifted and pulsed for 10, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Pop the ball out, well done. Okay, long legs for me now. So they're nice and straight. You can see the tops of your feet as you look down. Again, lengthen out through the top hip so your hips are stacked on top of one another. Little gap under the waist. Top leg lifted. We're just into side kick forwards and back. Forwards and back. So you can pop a fingertip on the floor for a bit of balance and just take that movement as far as you can maintaining the control. So just make sure that you're not wobbling forwards and back, your shoulders aren't moving to counterbalance you. Just a couple more. Good, keep that leg lifted and give me 10 little circles back. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Well done, have a little stretch, good. Okay, so from here, let's just come up into a seated position. We're just gonna work again through the backs of the legs, through the backs of the thighs, we're gonna do your leg pulling supine. So we are using those arms again. Legs are out straight, hands are behind you. Doesn't matter if your fingers are forwards, out to the side or back, whatever's more comfortable for you, but just keep your chest lifted, shoulders down and back, and you're pushing those heels down into the floor, pushing through the backs of your legs to lift your whole body. Okay, so breath in. Breathe out to lift, extend, breathe in to hold it, and lower down. And again, breath in, breathe out to push, in to hold, and out to lower. And again. Two more. Activating the whole of that posterior sling here. Because the arms are coming into play as well. And down. Good. Okay. Now, if you want to make that a little bit more challenging, we're going to try a leg lift when you're at the top of the movement. If that was challenging enough, just keep with both feet down on the floor. Okay. Tummy drawn in. Breath in, breathe out to lift. 
lift your right leg, lift your left leg, and again, one more each side, and then control as you come back down. Good. And again, breathe out to lift. Lift one leg, then the other. So you're just gonna get that oblique part of the sling kicking in at the back and lower. Two more. Here we go. Breathe out to push up. Lift the leg and the other. One more each side. Control it down. Last one. Here we go, chest lifted. Breathe out to lift. And extend one leg and the other. Release off, have a little roll of your shoulders. Good, okay, let's switch round. Do the other leg. I'm just gonna finish my coffee. I've earned it. Ah, lovely. Okay, foot, ball behind the back of your knee. We're going clam first. So your feet are in line with your bottom, knees are in front, head and neck wherever you're more comfortable. Okay, bit of length through that top hip, keeping the feet together, hips forwards, lift and lower at the knee. Good, keep that nice rotational movement through the hip, so you activate the back of the glute and the outside of the hip. Keeping that ball gently tucked in behind the knee. Keeps the activation of your hamstrings. One more. Okay, this time both feet lifted. Climb level two, still with some length in the top hip. Tummy drawn in, lift the knee and down. So with this one, you will just get a little bit more range. A little bit more challenging to your balance. Keep hold of the ball. Squeeze as you lift. And we're gonna stay up on this one. Keep it there, 10 little pulses. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, four, three, two, one and release take the ball out well done long legs this time so long through the legs you should be able to see the tops of your feet as you look down really lengthen through that top hip so you've got a little gap underneath the waist we're going to take that leg up into our side kick forwards and back as big or as small movement as you can but focus your energy on maintaining your control in your position so the shoulder doesn't rock forwards and back to counterbalance you. Good, keep going. Couple more. And then this time, keeping that leg back, 10 little circles back. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Well done, have a little relax. Give your hip a little rub. Pop onto your back for me now. We're just gonna do one last little exercise, shoulder bridge. So rest yourself down. Knees are bent, keep your heels nice and close to your bottom. Okay, just have a little think about your posture before we start. So it's a bit of length through the back of your neck. Your shoulders are down and away from your ears and your shoulder blades gently tucking down in towards your spine, open through the chest. Okay, just think about the tummy and the rib cage. So those ribs are softening down towards the hips, so you kind of engage through the upper part of your tummy. 
then think about the pelvic floor drawing up and in and engaging into the lower tummy. So we're getting that nice cylinder of stability here in your core. Just while you're maintaining that, make sure you can turn your head for me right to left. You shouldn't be forcing your head back down into the floor. It should be relaxed and just resting. Okay, back to the middle. Just it's the back of your head that's gently resting into the floor. Like I say, heels are quite close to you. Knees and feet are together. Okay, tummy drawn in, breath in. Breathe out as you flatten your spine down into the floor. Tailbone under, squeeze and lift and just roll your spine up off the floor until you hover on your shoulder blades. Breathe in and hold at the top. And breathe out as you roll back down. Segment by segment, roll through the spine. Return it to neutral and relax. Breath in and go again. Spine down into the floor, tailbone under, squeeze and lift. Breathe in at the top, breathe out as you come down. Make sure you're not forcing your head back down into the floor. You're keeping it relaxed. Roll again. Squeeze as you lift, power through the back of your hips to bring yourself onto your shoulder blades. You're not overextending in the lower back. You're bringing yourself up to a neutral position. And again, flatten down, tailbone under, squeeze and lift. Breathe out to lower, so it's like a wheel rolling across the floor, segment by segment, rolling back down. Last one. And breathe out to lower. Have a little hug of the knees. And then we're just going to add to that, we're going to come onto our toes at the top of the movement. So it just in, engages the back of the body a little bit more. So again, that nice gentle chin tuck, relaxed head, breath in, breathe out, flatten down, tailbone under, squeeze as you lift. The top of the movement, let's come onto the toes, onto the heels, onto the toes again, onto the heels. Three more. Roll it back down, roll, 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 and back to neutral. Here we go again. Flatten down, tailbone under, squeeze as you lift, up to your shoulder bridge, and then you push through the toes and down. Two, three, four, last one. Keep engaging through those glutes, roll it down. Turn to neutral, two more of those, here we go, flatten down, tailbone under, squeeze as you lift, hover at the top, push through the toes. One more, roll it down. Right through the spine, return to neutral. We're just going to do our last one now. Flatten the spine down, tailbone under, squeeze as you lift. Bring it up so you hover on the shoulders and you push through the toes and down. Two, three, four, last one. Roll it down, roll, roll, roll. And release. Give those knees a hook. Well done. Oh. And relax off. Okay, we're going to take it into a few stretches. So while you've still got your knees hooked here, I want you to see if you can take hold of your feet. Take yourself into that happy baby pose. So that's really opening up the lower part of your back. Getting some nice mobility through your hips. Don't worry about who's watching, you're at home, it's fine. Okay, and relax, pop your feet back down onto the floor. Hug your right knee into your chest, nice and tight. Let your left leg lengthen out on the mat, or on the floor. Just release off through the hips and the pelvis. Release the pressure on that right leg a little bit and up we go. 
little hamstring stretch and on and off with the foot. Okay, release the pressure on that leg, but keep it up to the ceiling. Take your hands wide, take it over your body. And back up. And release it down. Okay, hug your left knee into your chest, nice and tight. Slide your right leg straight, open up through the hips. Ease the pressure on that left leg, straighten it up to the ceiling, hamstring stretch, and then on up, off at the ankle. Okay, release the tension, take the arms wide, leg pointed up to the ceiling, take it over your body. And back up. And rest that foot down. Okay, both knees bent. Put your right foot onto your left knee, open up through the hip. And then if you can reach the hands between the legs, pick the left foot up off the floor, hold behind the left knee, keep the right knee open wide, stretch through the hip. And relax, okay, switch sides. Take your left foot onto your right knee, open through the knee, reach between the legs, pick the right leg up off the floor. feet down, just a little stretch all the way through, fingers to toes, nice big stretch, and relax, okay, just turn onto your side, push yourself up into sitting, get yourself however you're comfortable, just a little stretch the arms, have a roll of your shoulders, and then just take your right arm across your chest, open up through the back of your shoulder. Take that arm above your head, drop it down, give it a little push to just lengthen through your triceps. And release, okay, other arm, take it across your body, open the back of the shoulder. And then take it above your head, take it behind you and give it a little push. And relax down. Okay, nice shoulder rolls. Just let the shoulders rest down and relax. Chin to your chest. Little half circles in front with the head and the neck. Okay, so that's it. Posterior chain done for today. Well done. So you can do it as many times as you like and there are a few other sections on the uh, channel so you can always do a few more if you haven't done enough. Okay, and uh, I will see you next week for your anterior oblique sling. Okay, lovely. Have a good week. Thank you.